Hello, welcome again to Oscar Mike Radio. Oscar Mike Radio is about veterans, the military, active duty service members, and the people that support us. And I've had this string of artists on my show, primarily in the country music realm, and I'm pleased to be joined by Texas native, pop and country music star extraordinaire, Savannah Ray. Welcome to Oscar Mike Radio. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's great. It's great. Just uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to get to talk with you. Um, you've got some military connections and you're from the great state of Texas. But um, before we do all that, before we get into your story and all this, I have to ask the question I ask all artists. And there's no special treatment. You don't get a pass. And I'm going to preface what the question is by saying I have a perfect record. So let's see if you're a trend breaker there, Savannah. Oh, goodness. Now, you're, you're, you've been doing this quite some time, right? You've been playing, singing, performing for quite some time, right? Right. Yes, yes. Um, I've been doing music professionally since I was 12, and so I'm 22 now. So it's a, it's been a decade. <laughs> must have, wow, I can't wait to get into that. So, so you're not, this is not just something you picked up six months ago. You've devoted quite a bit of your life to it. Right. Yes. Yep. It, it's been pretty much like half of my life now. <laughs> and, and so you sacrificed. I mean, there, you, you, you're right. not only trying to do the normal things a person your age and just trying to work does, but there's things probably you've had to sacrifice, correct? Oh, correct. Hands down, for sure. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I like music myself. I'm more of a metalhead, you know, just to give you the, you know, the full background. <laughs> You'll be a great friends with my mom then. So is she. <laughs> All right. And you know how like um, the Beatles and a couple of these people have sold their catalogs for like, I think, you know, crazy money. Sure. So the question I'm kind of curious to start this whole party off with is, you know, you've been doing this half your life, half your life, rehearsing, photography, videos, mastering, mixing all the work that no one sees before you get out there. You've been doing it. Savannah, I've got a check for you for $100 million. I'll give you the check right now. I can't, I won't tell you if it'll clear or not, but I'll give it to you. If you take the check though, you can never perform again, ever. You're done with your career. You, you just fast forward to the good times and you're, you're done being a musician. Mm. Do you take the money? Definitely not. <laughs> and my record is perfect. No art. Nobody wants to take the money. Now, why wouldn't you take the money, Savannah? Why wouldn't I? Yeah. I think, I think it's just a matter of music is what I love and that's what I love to do. And you know, not being able to do that anymore outweighs the want for any sort of materialistic thing, such as, you know, money or fame or this, this, that, and the other, you know, it's, um, it's about the music first and foremost, and it always has been. And that's just, you know, something that, you know, I figured out that I wanted to do this when I was 12 years old and that's pretty young. Um, and I've dedicated half my life to doing it. And I'm like, well, I've gotten this far and I love it. So why not stop, you know, and just having to stop something like that, that you dedicate your life to that is just, it doesn't even enter my mind, you know, like that's, right, right. it's what I want to do. And I just, any amount of money could never. I, I, I am zero and like 11 now. I mean, 11 artists have said mm -hmm. in various ways, no, they wouldn't do it. So yeah. let's go back to where this started, because I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. What happened when you're 12 that said, I want to do this? Like when I was 12, I didn't have that clarity. I was, I was, you know, in the Transformers and GI Joe to date myself. I wasn't even <laughs> thinking about, you know, computers and right. computer games. What, what made you say, you know, I really want to do this? Yeah. Um, well, I probably have to credit that to my parents. My mom and my dad both have been very influential in just music in general. They have let me listen to everything since I came out the womb, basically. And they're like, hey, this is what we like. We hope you like it too, sort of thing. And, you know, I just 
they gave me such a vast appreciation from everything from classical music to country to metal to 15th century lute music you know you name it we can i pretty much heard it and i have an appreciation for it and so when i was around 10 years old they started taking me to concerts and that was such a blast we would just go to concert every weekend sort of thing and you know, I just started seeing all these people up on stage. I'm like, wow, that's so cool that these people are, you know, living their dream and doing music and stuff. And that's something that I just absolutely love. And so I specifically remember an instance where it was me and my mom. We went to an Evanescence concert in San Antonio. And I think it was around 11 years old. And I saw Amy Lee up on the stage and she's the lead singer of Evanescence. And she just has such an incredible voice. She's just oh, yeah. so insanely talented. And I saw her and I was like, wow, that's that's so cool. That's what I want to do. And I turned to my mom. I was like, mom, I want to be her or I want to be like her or just do something like her. Um, and, you know, she took me very, very seriously when I said that. And so she's like, okay, well, you know, let's enroll you into some vocal lessons. Let's enroll you into some guitar lessons. And that was just kind of the beginning of everything for me. So you go on to do this and, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'll learn about who I'm talking about with and you, you taken this and you've, been on the voice and you've met Demi Lovato and you've done all that I mean what's that journey been like sure yeah I think for me um the journey has been very very long <laughs> very long uh, I guess I have been doing this for 10 years and while that may not seem like a super long amount of time it's been a long time for me just because you know the those years are kind of like your formative years right like that's when you're growing up that's when you're deciding who you want to be and what you want to do. Well, at that point in time, I pretty much already decided what I want to do. And so I'm like, okay, well, nose to the grindstone, you know, let's sort of, let's do this and let's do it as best as we can. And so I've kind of been also in this weird area of, I grew up, you know, I'm, my interests are changing, my likes are changing. I've done all kinds of music from pop to rock, to alternative, to R&B, to, I mean, even dabbled in some like show tunes, Broadway kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, being from Texas, I have that country in me. That's pretty much always been there. My two main um, influences, I would say, would be country and rock. And country is just kind of, that's just who I am. You know, I mean, I was five years old and I thought my dream job was going to be a horse trainer. That's what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to go train them horses until that kind of fizzled out and music took over because that was my, pretty much my first love. But, you know, I'm kind of growing up in these different, just years of my life and my interests are changing my music is changing so i've kind of been across the board with everything that i've done um which is really really cool and it's given me such a just appreciation for all other types of music as well but it's also given me some really cool experiences like you said such as you know being on the boys being able to sing backup for demi lovato on you know the voice and the american music awards and stuff like that living out in la living out in texas living out in you know nashville i've kind of been there done that all across the board so it's definitely been a journey and I've learned so much along the way but I think now I'm finally kind of coming into myself you know figuring out my style figuring out you know what I want to say and what, what I want my music to sound like so I'm finally finally in a in a place where I'm like okay this this is it this is Savannah Ray all right all right so I checked out your single typical Texas woman to go with the Texas girl excuse me um <laughs> I'm, I'm calling you, uh, you're, to me, you're not a girl, you're a young woman, so excuse me, but typical Texas <laughs> girl. But here's the thing. Now, now, I live like eight miles from Texas, and I've been to Dallas, Lubbock, Waco, San Antonio, Houston, Ga all that. I've been to Texas, a lot of Texas. And the thing is, so here's the question. People in my part of the country, I'm in, in the Northeast now, like New Englanders, they don't understand what Texas is. Mm -hmm. and how Texans believe that they're special because they got to be born in Texas. Right. And Texas itself is a very, like, someone in Dallas is going to have a different Texas experience than someone living in Houston. So right. Kind of unpack it for me a little bit, because I've lived in Texas. I've met several wonderful women, girls in Texas. Kind of explain to us, what, what, what is a typical Texas woman girl when texas is such a big wonderful diverse place yeah so i think that typical texas girl was just a really fun song that i wrote um 
with a couple of friends of mine, including Pam Tillis, which country music legend, got to give her a shout out. She's awesome. Um, and we kind of wrote it in the fact of kind of calling out some of the stereotypes that I think Texas girls sometimes have is, you know, sometimes they look Where at us they? and they're like, oh, they're the rhinestones and the big hair. And, you know, they're just like, woo, fly to y'all big and blonde and just, uh, like, I'm pretty sure I've been called dumb more times than I can count, you know, sort of thing. It's just all of these stereotypes that you can, like, some people think about. And I'm like, no, no, not at all. Yeah, sure, we might like the big hair. Sure, we might like the glitter and the rhinestones and all of that. But we're, you know, tough girls and, you know, we come from a place where we understand the value of a dollar and, you know, just some sort of things that are ingrained in us being from where we're being, you know, like I said, we may like all the, all the outer materialistic, you know, woo, the Dolly Partons, all that. We love that. But at the same time, you know, we're strong and we're resilient and we have brains and we're a lot more than what you see, you know, on the outside. And I think that so that song typical texas girl is kind of a tribute to that you know never to judge a book by its cover well what i got out of it was because I've, I've met some some women who you know they go to church on sunday and you know they have their their you know office job teaching job whatever and let me tell you what you know when it's time to go hunt the wild boars that are you know messing with their dad's crops they load the f-250 with the four-wheeler and and the you know 30 30 and they're ready to, oh, yeah. they're ready to, you know hey or oh, you yeah know, right oh, right yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, that's, you know, we have the pageant girls that can throw down, you know, we have yes. the rodeo queens that can go, you know, just tear it up. And that's what I think I love about just being a Texas girl, because we have those stereotypes and sure. Do we love it? Yeah. We love the hairspray. We say hire the hair closer to God, but you know, <laughs> I don't know how you all do it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I can't, you know, I had no point of reference, but I am like, <laughs> How in the world? And, and you gotta understand, it, we're in Texarkana. It's 105 degrees outside, and not a strand of hair, Savannah, is out of place. Everything mm -hmm. is perfect. That takes effort. It does. It really does. And see, but that's where the mental toughness comes in. You're like, I'm oh. gonna sit here, and I'm just gonna hairspray it all, and we're just gonna. It's just what it is, <laughs> you know. It's like we're gonna work to look decent but you know we're also going to work in other ways as well and i think that's kind of the message of typical texas girl like yeah we're we're typical sure we like our you know like our big hair but don't ever call us dumb because that is the last thing that we are no no that's a mistake and and, and, <laughs> and that's not wise to do you've been doing this for effectively half your life sure. and, and you're you're not new at this mm -hmm. i i do wonder is there a part of the whole creative performing songwriting process that you like more than other? Do you like performing more than songwriting? Do you like being in the studio? What part of this, you know, really lights your fire day by day? Because it can be a grind. So what keeps you going? Yeah, I think um, every artist is different. You know, some people like songwriting more. Some people like creating in the studio better. Some people like um, live shows and everything. And I think I enjoy every part of it. But I would have to say that live shows are my bread and butter. Um, I love being in the studio. I love creating. I love songwriting. I love doing all that. But I think that ultimately when, you know, I'm creating all of these new songs is I'm taking them out on the road. You know, I'm going to take them and play them for people. And then I'm going to, you know, have to judge their reactions from what I'm playing. I'm like, okay, well, I hope that, you know, they like it sort of thing. Because touring is just my favorite thing in the entire world. If I could be on tour every single day. I totally would like, it's just, really? it's my favorite thing. It's just, I think the adrenaline rush, number one, you know, from being on stage, but also just connecting with people and meeting new people. And especially now that social media has become such a big presence in artists lives. Now, you know, you can meet someone that comes to your show that you recognize, you know, from their pictures online, you recognize their username and you're like, oh, wow, it's really good to finally put, you know, a face to a name. It's so good to finally meet you, you know, and it's, it's so cool um, how that works. And I think that touring for me is just my number one and will always be. Well, uh, I'm checking out your YouTube channel and you actually perform at a place I've been to several times, even though I live in New England and that was the Boondocks in Columbia, Tennessee. <laughs> And I've seen a lot of good acts there, and it's a great little place to uh, catch talent like yours, you know, playing. 
-hmm. it's a really cool vibe. I mean, what happens when you're at a place like the boondocks and there's people starting to dance as they start to get into what you're doing? What's that do to you when you start seeing people get in, get in your vibe and, and really, you know, bond with you? Yeah, I mean, that's probably one of the best feelings uh, and one of the best things about live shows is that you can kind of interact with the audience, but you can also really connect with them and kind of feed off of their energy. You know, if they're, you know, hooping and hollering, you're going to want to hoop and holler. You know, if they're dancing around, you're going to want to go and dance around. And it's also really nice as a performer to see people dancing or see people, you know, going crazy, going wild sort of thing, thinking that, okay, I'm doing a pretty good job at something here, you know, I must be doing something right. Well, that's part of it, right? So, you know, you had a long day, you, you, you've gone through, uh, you know, setting up all the equipment, you've gotten off the bus and you get up there and the mic goes live and you start performing and does it all go away and you're just in the moment right then? Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's just once you kind of step on stage, it's just kind of like a bubble. And yeah. it's just you kind of stay in that bubble until you're done. And some shows are shorter than others. Some are longer. Sometimes you're there for 20 minutes. Sometimes you're there for four hours. But, you know, it's probably the best bubble to be in because at that point in time, nothing really else. You know, you're not thinking about anything else. You're just kind of in the moment and nothing really else matters. You're like, okay, this is going to be a great, you know, hour and a half and we're just going to have fun. And that's my number one thing is just to have fun with it because I used to suffer from a lot of stage fright and I just used to overthink and I used to, you know, just not be able to perform my best because I was so nervous and it just wasn't as enjoyable, you know, for me as it should have been. And I kind of had to work through all that, but it, is so much better now that I'm like, okay, I can breathe, you know, I can have fun. And it's not that I wasn't having fun before, but you know, you get stuck in your head and you're like, oh, well, what if I don't hit this note? What if I don't, you know, do this, you know, perfectly like I did in practice or whatever. And it's just at the end of the day, it's have fun. You know, no one's gonna care. Everyone's probably drinking anyway is where you're at. You know, if you're playing a bar, <laughs> everyone's too drunk to notice the note that you just missed sort of thing. So it's like, just go out and have fun, give them a show. And I think that that is probably one of the best uh, pieces of advice that I could ever give anyone that, you know, is struggling with stage fright too. Like, just have fun, man. Just get out of your head and go have a blast. You said something earlier that I did want to ask you about is, because I've seen this, where the the artist or band will get a 20-minute set and it's not negotiable. Like, like I, because, you know, some of the things I do, I'm, I'm very closely plugged in because I have to introduce you all for some of these events and when they say 20 minutes it's 20 minutes so mm -hmm. i was curious is is it difficult is it more difficult to bring the energy for 20 minutes versus getting an hour and being able to build and and, and engage with the audience is it harder actually to perform a shorter set than a longer set i think it depends on the material that you're performing yeah. um for me, I love live shows and those, like I said, those are my bread and butter. So yeah. therefore I love energetic songs. I love upbeat songs. I country and rock are my two, my two loves. And so meshing them together, you can probably be like, okay, well, that's probably going to be, you know, upbeat. that's going to be high energy. And so I think that for the shorter sets, it's actually easier for me because I can just give it all in 20 minutes and then I'm done, you know, versus, you know, having to give it all for an hour and a half and then after the show you're like I can't move <laughs> but you know it's, it just depends I think on the music I think for me shorter sets are easier just because you know they just don't require as much energy and yeah. you don't don't really have to think about as much as oh I'm only playing maybe four or five songs really so it's not not too crazy unless you know you're playing four hour sets and you're like oh man I got about 60 songs here <laughs> that I got to be on the ball for every single one right, and, you know right. with me it's it's high energy with me so I'm like well that's that's a long one <laughs> so I have to ask how did COVID in 2020 affect your arc or because some artists I've talked to it really impacted them some artists, it really didn't, it was just a blip in the radar. They were in certain parts of the country that um, approached COVID differently than other parts of the country. Sure. Some artists are like, look, if I can't get 2021 going, I don't know how long I'm, I'm going to be able to do this. How, how was your experience, Savannah? Yeah, um, 
my experience was pretty interesting in the fact that my last show that I played in 2020 was the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, uh, which I was super blessed to be able to play because I've been going there since I was a kid. And so it was my first time playing. And so I was so pumped and so excited. And I was super excited because after the uh, San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, I actually had the Houston Rodeo booked, which is our biggest rodeo in Texas. And it's a, it's a big deal if you're in Texas. And yes, so, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, probably one of the biggest deals next to the Texas State Fair. Um, but I played the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, had a blast. It was, I think, like February 18th. And I was a couple days away, actually, from leaving for the Houston one. And I just got a call, like, a day and a half before, right before I was going to leave. And they're like, it's not going on anymore. And I think Marin Morris was the last person to perform. And then it got shut down. And so that kind of created this huge snowball effect for all of the other shows that I had planned for the year and every single thing got canceled and I was supposed to be on the road for about 250 days out of the year and it went from 250 days to absolutely zero and so that was that was a shock <laughs> and that was absolutely the worst just seeing everything get canceled 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 until you know there was nothing left and your year is just kind of one big giant question mark and so we kind of had to go back to the drawing board and figure out you know what I wanted to do and you know what we could do at that point in time and so you know like what do you do with all this time off well we came up with the answer of no time off <laughs> taking no time off during this time off you know really writing and focusing on getting new material you know getting into the recording studio as much as possible just coming up with new music social media obviously creating that really big online presence as much as I could doing live streams, doing, you know, little online concerts, anything just to keep things updated and right. keep things, you know, keep the ball rolling that way when things did go back to normal and, you know, things start opening back up, we could just hit the ground running instead of, you know, waiting all that time, not doing anything. And, Oh, everything's open now. Like, Oh wait, I have no music. Oh wait. You know, like everyone's kind of just unfollowed me, forgotten about me sort of thing. Cause I haven't been doing anything, you know? And so we, we wanted to make sure that I had things to, as soon as things started open, you know, hit the ground run and get the ball rolling that sort of thing. So I could just be right there and ready when things started to go back to normal. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, you adapted and overcome, which kind of, which kind of leads me to, you know, what I want to talk about next is with, the military. Um, it's, it's my understanding that you come from a military family and that you perform the national anthem and other patriotic things. What's, what's that like coming from a military family? Yeah, I think coming from a military family on both sides, uh, both my mom and my dad's uh, side, just um, it kind of instills in you just kind of a different set of values, I think, that maybe if you don't come from a military family, it may be more difficult to understand those set of values or just, you know, even be exposed to those set of values. You know, you understand the value of hard work. You understand, you know, morality and you understand what it means to be, you know, American and what it means to be free and, you know, to give gratitude and thanks to the people that help make that possible for us. And I think that it kind of makes me sad. I feel like nowadays that's been very lost and I don't really know why but somehow we just kind of descended into this just chaotic mess, disaster, whatever you want to call it. But I think that, you know, a lot of people don't get to appreciate, you know, the military. Like I think people that are a part of the military do. One of the things that um, when I talk to an artist like yourself, mm -hmm. there's a lot of my fellow veterans and, and myself to a degree who are trying to do you know, something on the side or a new career focus in the arts, right. whether it's being a, a, a country rock artist like yourself, whether it's photography, uh, you know, cinematography, whatever. Sure. They're trying to get started. And, and, you know, this is where I'm like, well, you might be 22, but you've done this for half your life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us get out of the military, kind of bounce around, we start this up and, there's a lot of frustration, a lot of grind there. And a, a lot of us tend to get bogged down or just say, you know, I'm going to do something else. And they, they kick themselves a couple of years later that they should have kept in it. Right. 
what do you say to somebody, you know, military or not, but, you know, I'm just, I'm looking at the, the veteran focus, the, the, the person served our country, came back home, said, you know what, I want to start singing, got a guitar, started doing this and realized how hard it was. And they're on that cusp of, do I keep doing this or do I just pack it in? Is there anything you would tell them? Honestly, I would say serving in the military is a lot more difficult than being a singer and, you know, doing what I do, I would think. It's just, it's a different, it's a different thing for sure. You know, when you're in music, it is a business and it is an industry that is extremely cutthroat and it can be pretty hard at times and it can be really discouraging for sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm no expert, but I have been doing this, you know, half my life. And so I've been around the block. Like I said, I've done all different types of genres. And so I've seen a lot, I've learned a lot and I've probably made more mistakes than I have made successes and wins. But with those mistakes, you know, I learned a lot from them and you, you can kind of keep learning. And I think that to anybody who may be struggling with that, aspect of things, you know, oh, do I want to, you know, continue to do this? Oh, do I, you know, is this worth it sort of thing? Like, this is a, maybe not for me. This is kind of difficult, whatever that may be. I think that kind of just uh, stick it out for a little bit while longer, you know, you never really know. I think that those hilarious stories that you hear about just really successful artists, you know, sometimes that they'll tell, they're like, oh, I was three days away from throwing in the towel, you know, sort of thing. And then I got the call that changed my life and whatnot. You know, it's it's one of those stories that are just so cool to me that I'm like, see, that's why you never want to quit. And that's why you always kind of want to give it your all, you know, and it's it's times like, oh, well, I'll just go do this little karaoke thing. I'll go do this little open mic thing. It's not going to turn into anything, but I might as well do it. And then that's when you meet someone that changes your life, you know, sort of thing. And it's like, you never really know what could happen next. And I think that that is kind of the guiding light for me as an artist, you know, it's not guaranteed. Nothing is, you never really know. It's like release a song. Everyone could hate it. <laughs> well all right go back to the drawing board you know right, right. it's just you never really know what could happen so i would hate for anyone to give up their passion give up their love and lose the passion lose the love you know for music because of how difficult this industry can be because at the end of the day i think that it is worth it absolutely absolutely no it's, it's a common thing that i hear is and you might say the military is a more difficult job uh, i'm not going to disagree with you but, but <laughs> there is the aspect where artists and you know military people have to constantly adapt we're constantly moving right. you got to be there on time you can't <laughs> miss a you know studio session um there, there's a lot at stake in terms of a person's career so i think the, the theme you're telling me is the same is to you know find a way to persevere and stick with it right. i think it's important exactly. i think it's important it really is yeah i mean i think that that is number one out of everything. I think that there's this saying that I always kind of rings in my mind is that um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Um, and it's just keep going that extra mile, keep, you know, putting in 110% sort of thing, because you never know what can happen if you just, like you said, persevere. I mean, you know, speak things to into existence, but also take the actions to go and make those things reality you know and i think that it, it it'll happen for sure and awesome. you're going to get to a point where you're like okay I'm, I'm doing something right here all right so we're going to end this on kind of a light note um <laughs> i live in new england mm -hmm. and, and you know a lot of new englanders have no idea how one large texas is or how different certain places in texas are so mm -hmm. Hypothetically, I have a friend of mine from Boston flying in San Antonio. Mm. Where should that person go? Not the obvious tour stuff like the Alamo, but where would where would Savannah tell them to go to have a really authentic Texas time? I, I'm actually going to say the Alamo is one because the Alamo is just Texas. Okay, you got it to, is right. Just, I think that's one thing. Texas. I have. Um, I'm an ancestor that actually fought in the Alamo. His name is really? on the center outside. Yes. 
His name was Jesse McCoy. <laughs> oh, okay, well, now wait a minute now, now Savannah, you've got to come back on. We, we, we can have a whole episode just on that. You didn't I tell know, me that. I, yeah, I am a daughter of the Republic of Texas. And so uh, <laughs> and we have all that in, on my side of the family. It's really, really cool. Will you come back on? Yes, Will please. I would, I'd love to talk about the Alamo. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Whew. I just had... Okay, anyway, so the Alamo, yes, we're both in agreement, absolutely. And I got to tell you, I was glad when people pounded those people who defaced the Alamo uh, like 10 years ago. That was the right thing to do. I mean, oh, no for sure, for yeah. sure. There yeah. were so many threats of defacing the Alamo over the past couple of years. And, you know, the Daughters of the Republic of Texas and all these various little organizations, we stood outside and, you know, guarded it because it's like, that's, that's a piece of history right there. That's a, sacred. It sacred. really is, especially in Texas, you know, I mean, it's right. sacred for the entirety of the U.S., but especially in Texas, that's like our like child. <laughs> right, like, right, right. So Alamo's number one. We're both in agreement there. We got a lot to, to unpack there. What's next? So the Alamo is number one, I would always say. Um, the Riverwalk is cool just for that, you know, it, san antonio experience i only really go down there rarely because there is so many people down there you know it's like austin sixth street or nashville's broadway it's right. that <laughs> there's so many people but it's it's really cool to experience you know and um i say that the food is probably our number one draw to san antonio we have the best tex-mex and we have some incredible barbecue no argument with tex-mex i tell people <laughs> Well, no, 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 no. This is not Tex-Mex. We got to go to San Antonio. So no argument there. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> My last name is Garza. So take it from me. <laughs> I, um, no argument. I, I believe you. We have some great Tex-Mex, uh, down in, uh, San Antonio. Um, I would also say that we have some really, really great music venues down there. Uh, some very, very iconic ones. You know, we have Billy Bob's in Fort Worth. We have Gillies. We have um, Floors Country Store out in San Antonio. We have places like Green Hall, which is on my bucket list to play. You know, we have some incredible, incredible artists in Texas that are always playing constantly, constantly, constantly. And I think that one of the draws to Texas is just the Texas country music. You know, it's it's just aside from that. I mean, we just have so much history in Texas. You know, we we're very different state <laughs> i would say than a lot of them you know we um we came about in a very different way and we are huge i will say once you go to i think it's a uh, i think it's what is it texarkana yep. to el paso and you see like that sign of 857 miles to el paso and you're just like wow that is one large state <laughs> well i rode my motorcycle from Arizona to Boston and from from El Paso to Houston was like 900 miles it's it, it so long, long. <laughs> it, is, right? it, is it takes 12 hours to get in and out of Texas absolutely absolutely so the single dropping on July 23rd is typical Texas girl by Savannah Ray Savannah how can people find you I'm going to have the links to all your social media stuff in the show post, but tell people how they can check you out. Sure. I mean, you can find me Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Everything is at the Savannah Ray, just the Savannah Ray. The um, Savannah and my Ray. website is the Savannah Ray.com. <laughs> and then anything else is just Savannah Ray. I mean, it's uh, it's really easy to find me. You just type in Savannah R-A-E and you're good to go. There you go, it, folks. I'm going to have all the links in the show post. You can check it out. Uh, the single drops on July 23rd. You shouldn't miss it. I can't wait to see what you do next. And I am absolutely stoked. She's coming back on to talk about the Alamo. That's awesome. I can't wait. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't get excited, but I can't help it. I am. Um, <laughs> me too. Me too. So we're winding down. I, I always, always like talking to artists. And I don't mind the fact that they're civilian because in a way they have to adapt to life and work and what they're trying to do just like us veterans do and there's a lot of veteran artists out there who are making it just like savannah thank you so much for coming on oscar mike radio well thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure awesome awesome as we say in oscar mike radio we are mission in flight